For me, it was it was both the epic and the minutiae and specificity of, of the small. Did you know there's a whole lot more to Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, than meets the eye? We've gathered a bunch of secret details you may have missed. Like what the sets actually looked like, and what makes Prince Durin's beard so cumbersome. Number 1. No stone was left unturned. Everything including Galadriel's dagger was taken into account for the Rings of Power series. Every character, set, and wardrobe design was made so specifically to immerse the actors and audience into the imagined Middle Earth. Daniel Wayman was costume designer struck when he realized he was getting lost in one of his co-star's outfits. Hold on, there's, there's that thing that I never spotted before, and then, but within that thing, there's another thing, and everything has meaning. We're gonna get into the sets next since everything is so infinitely detailed. But now we can start to realize why this production clocked in at nearly $500 million to make. Number 2. Everyone was anticipating the new original look of Numenor, and we were stunned to get a short glimpse of it in the trailer. Like everything behind the scenes of this series, it was built as real as possible. It was unprecedented and one of the most extraordinary sets Utilizing the natural geography of New Zealand, it took set designers approximately five months to build. Talk about some big dollars for one set. You won't be able to tell the difference between a fake tree and a real tree. On a more comical note, we bet you were wondering where some of those bird feces on the rooftops came from. It was actually a couple very lucky set workers that got to layer on fake feces on the roofs. Not a detail we would have ever thought about, but apparently they have an explanation for everything. Number 3. Did you ever wish you had a beard of many animals? Probably not, and we're sure Owen Arthur wishes he never had after filming his scenes as Prince Durin IV. All that material in one beard proved to be extremely cumbersome on the actor's face. Owen explains the wig weighs as much as a newborn baby. That's a lot to carry on your chin, and even show emotions with. In whole, the piece consisted of human, goat, horse, and yak hair. But the real kicker comes from how it was designed. Every detail was considered. The head of the makeup and hair department, Jane O'Kane, said, We integrated real copper threads to give it something unique in light, reflection, and texture. There were also felt thread structures in the beard, all handmade. It was an extensive jigsaw saw puzzle of facial hair. Number 4. When we say things needed to be specific, we weren't just saying all the things that would be noticeable to the audience. Production's attention to detail went all the way down to the very leaves placed on set. We'd be meticulously moving a leaf and making sure it sat in the right place. We never thought leaves would be so interesting, but knowing that even a simple leaf placement made a huge difference on the production makes us rewatch it even more. Number 5. Who doesn't like little hints of a character's destiny? The writers of the show are not just giving away important plot points at the beginning, they are expertly dropping little hints as to what will happen to each group of characters. Yeah, can't talk too much. Of course, the cast of this massive show cannot leak any hints nor point the audience at specific moments, but they are saying it will be pretty obvious once the plot thickens. You're on to something yeah. in terms of like the energy and the momentum that you've seen. After listening to what the cast said, it looks like we need to keep a close eye on Bronwyn, Orendir, and Theo. Number 6. Working on location in New Zealand is a privilege for the actors and crew, making performances and moods better. New Zealand, where you just can, anywhere you go, you can be inspired by the landscape. This country's fantasy and malleable like landscape made it the perfect location to build Middle Earth into. For the actors and crew, it was extremely hard for them to remember they were on the actual set. It wasn't like you saw the behind of the thing. There were layers upon layers upon layers of things that were carefully crafted. And for a show of this caliber, you'd think CGI would be a major factor. However, for show creators, practicality was key for their sets. Most of our sets were built, so we were actually there. Number 7. Peter Jackson cemented the idea that everything in a film needs to be as real as possible. For the showrunners of The Rings of Power, they decided to give a big budget to the prosthetics and makeup department. Which makes sense, given that only 25% of the actors casted played human characters. And then also great when you're on break and you're like seeing an orc drinking a smoothie or trying to eat a sandwich. This must have been incredibly fun for the orc actors, but a lot more tedious work on the makeup artists to make each one more unique from the last. 
Number 8. You may have thought the elves were always graceful behind the scenes. However, those small details in Morphid Clark's Gladriel costume caused a lot of trips and choking. People were constantly stepping on my train and my cloak, so I was getting slightly strangled. But it seemed like for many of the actors, who were donned in some sort of armor or prosthetic, were left catching themselves falling to the ground. Just listen to what these poor hobbits had to say about their hobbit feet slippers. There were people slipping everywhere. Number 9. No, there isn't only one universal Middle Earth accent. It wasn't a full Irish accent, so it was like a half foot English. Markella Cavanaugh, along with the other actors, heavily relied on a dialect coach to help them through the long shooting. It really must have been hard for Markella to shake off that Australian accent. Number 10. You'd think a nobleman like Kemen would do anything for the cause, without asking questions. But for the actor, Leon Wadham, when asked to make his life of the DP easier for a scene, he became very reluctant. But at the same time, I would like to look cool doing this. All he had to do was switch up his horse riding style to hold the light in his dominant hand, which actually turned out to make more sense for the character. That actually helps with the story because he's out of his element. Number 11. Sarah Zhuangobani and many other cast members spent hours in the makeup chair. So the best way to pass the time? Singing songs, of course. Being a hobbit means putting in the work for prosthetics and makeup. But Sarah knows how to turn a boring time into a song-filled one. She explained, Actually, we had a lot of fun in the makeup chair. Two and a half hours sounds like a long time, but actually we had a great time. So it was like no time passed. Number 12. Being far away from home for anyone is hard, especially if it's for years at a time. As the Rings of Power were at one point, the only show shooting in the world during the pandemic, this meant that the cast could not see their families for almost two years. But this experience, as hard as it was, proved to be a major milestone for the cast's relationship as a whole. Zazanin Bonyadi said, we filmed during a pandemic, a global pandemic. It was difficult because we were away from loved ones for almost two years and our support systems. But what that did is it sort of forced us to lean on each other. And that is a bonding experience like no other. Number 13. There are a ton of nostalgic characters and locations that true J.R.R. Tolkien fans can spot in the series. One broader aspect being that each set seems seamless with one another, as if all of Middle-earth was created in real life for this production. This adaptation also introduces characters old and new that have never been portrayed on screen before. It inadvertently points Tolkien fans back to the books and even attracts new ones. Markella Cavanaugh believes in this concept, saying, I hope that they respond to this and connect to it for sure, but I also do hope that there are kids that haven't been introduced yet, and that, you know, maybe they will be inspired to go back to the books and rediscover them or discover them for the first time. Number 14. When you have the money to create practical weather elements, this can create a lot more added safety precautions during shoots. If there was wind, there'd be like huge fans. If there was fire, there'd be people in the fire department. By adding real elements to a scene, you not only save time in post-production, but also obtain the most convincing performances by actors. Dangerous? Yes. But what's so bad about giving the poor makeup department a break? Number 15. One would never think a scene like this would be the most difficult to shoot, but when you have elves mixed with dwarves, it is going to be tough matching them up. Executive producer Lindsay Weber says the hardest scene to shoot was the Elrond and Dwarf Prince during the Force Rock competition, because of the fact that they had to cheat the camera a little to make the dwarves seem much smaller than their counterparts. All the calculated math made for a tough time. As Weber likes to put it, it is probably the single most complex and technical thing we shot, which you wouldn't think because it's a bunch of guys walking around the room, but most of them are meant to be one size and one is meant to be another, and that is a very complicated math problem. We're not saying we do anything to be in the Lord of the Rings show, but we definitely power through the crazy sets and heavy beards to be an extra in this one. Maybe our detective skills surprised some of you viewers. Were there any secrets that you spotted while watching the series? Tell us your findings in the comment section below.